A general election in May now looks unlikely, but you wouldn't think so from the inside the Westminster village. Election fever has already taken over. But as much as flailing poll numbers and election strategies will inevitably come under the microscope in the long months ahead, we cannot afford to take our eyes off the damage even a zombie Tory government could wreak on its way out. This is a party that has sunk this country into recession, decimated public services, and starved local authorities of vitally needed resources. Each day brings a new low from a party ready to stoke harmful culture wars to save its electoral skin, as the Home Secretary's dangerous and divisive attack on multiculturalism and migrants demonstrated earlier this week, but it is in the government's failure to address the climate emergency that they are leaving the worst legacy of all. Every moment counts in what the UN has termed a critical decade for climate action. Yet here in the UK, rather than playing a leading role in driving the transition to net zero forward, we have a government that seems increasingly prepared to turn its back on it altogether. Just this week, any last remaining vestiges of claims to UK climate leadership were completely blown to pieces. In Parliament, the government doubled down on its dangerous climate culture war by passing the same pointless offshore petroleum licensing bill, which triggered the recent Kingswood by-election after Conservative MP Chris Skidmore resigned in protest at the government's decision to prioritise and politicise new oil and gas licences above a sensible investment plan for the future. Meanwhile, Sunak's claim last year to be proud to be a world leader in reaching net zero looked even more ludicrous, if not downright duplicitous, in the High Court recently as a legal challenge from Good Law Project, Friends of the Earth and Client Earth forced the government to finally come clean and reveal its own assessments on whether the UK's current policies can get us to net zero by 2050.